So in first temple times, they basically were just anointing, like you were going to see now, if there was a dispute who gets to be king, they anoint the guy who's supposed to be king, and they anoint the Kohen Gadol, who technically could also enter that position by just dressing like a Kohen Gadol, and none of the Kalim need it. So it became completely unnecessary. So that's why it could have been hidden. Wait a minute, so why hide it? So one of the things we talked about before you guys were around here was why hide the Ark of the Covenant? And I put some online sources from the Gemara. You don't hide the Ark of the Covenant because you're afraid the Gentiles were going to capture it. They hid the Ark of the Covenant because of how the Jews were treating it. They might be, they might fall into the wrong idea. They might worship it even, <clears throat> which is a problem. So too, the Shevet HaMishchah was not hidden because they're afraid the Gentiles would use it. Don't forget, they start using it. What does that matter? It's, it's like it's, it's, it doesn't exist, just like two and Tower doesn't exist. They don't have the prohibitions we have. So it would be, it would be nothing, you know? It's almost like it would be that uh, whoever controls the Shem and the Mishka, like, ah, now I'm the king. Yes, so, that's why they hid. Just like they hid the Ark of the Covenant because it could, Jews were treated wrongly. Shem and Mishka is used for anointing pie priests, anointing the kings. That's the first thing. You have said it falls into the wrong hands. That would be like, oh, I, you know, I gave this coin to Shem and Mishka now. Really, we saw that it can't just be that a coin godo puts a coin godo outfit or a regular coin puts it on. And we talked about this in our bias two weeks ago. The way it comes out from the locals, we're going to see it in place again. It can't just put on the garments and say, oh, now I'm coin godo. You have to be appointed to that position. And Toso says you can even be removed from that position. The Rama doesn't allow for removal. <clears throat> Rama would just say, if you want to remove this guy, do like the Shlomo did to Eviatar say, never come back again, because if you do come back, you'll, you'll still be coin godo technically. So you could have two coin godos. Uh, what the point is, if it fell into the wrong hands, they would be making people into real coin and say, see, he's been actually anointed. Or they would anoint someone who shouldn't be king and say, no, now, oh, he's been anointed. He's, he's a legitimate king. And even worse, Rav Kapach points this out, that Shem Mishka literally means anointing oil. But the Aramaic means oil of greatness. It appoints him to the position, so it makes him great. He says the anointing is never actually literal. The Icar is not literal anointing. He says that's what the Christians got wrong. They say the Mashiach is literally translated into Greek as Christos, yeah. meaning the anointed one. And Rav Kappa points out the Mashiach himself will not necessarily be anointed because like Rambam says, once David was anointed, technically speaking, unless there's a dispute, you don't need to anoint his successor. In, uh, yeah. In, in Johnny, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, some point he, he mentions um, an anointed one, referring to the very, very, very last king, which we'll pick up in a second, at yeah. least according to Rashi. Uh, yeah. And of course, he was never anointed. He was a guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it wasn't a guy. He was a Jew. 100% oh, Jew. His, his, he was from, was, he, he was from people who had converted like four generations before him. Right, but it was, um, he it was, was a, it was a, it was a improper, stock. It was an improper conversion. Though. No, no, no. They were 100% Jewish. He was 100% Jewish from his mother. The oh, conversion. Mother, okay. The fact is the conversion wasn't proper four generations ago. <coughs> Herod was a Jew, a bad Jew. And a Jew was certainly not qualified to be king, but he was Jewish. His mother didn't convert and his father converted under duress. Conversion under duress, but everybody eventually became, you know, nitma'u among the Jews. They had been emancipated slaves, basically. So the problem was they're Jewish. Agrippus was 100% Jewish, but he wasn't qualified because he's from Gentile, uh, from convert stock. Right. Okay, so that's a problem. Hold on a second. So what are we getting at? First, they hid the, arc, the, 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 the anointing oil because in the wrong hands, it could be used for anointing the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And of course, you could be an Avera. Just doing this is an Avera. So why should you have it lying around? But even worse than that, you have this new group that shows up at the end of Second Temple times. What do they call themselves? Christians. If the Christians had gotten their hands, remember the Christians originally start off as a sectarian group among the Jews. If they got their hands on the anointing oil, what if what if JC had been anointed somehow? Actually anointed. That would have been pretty bad. Like it's a real claim to legitimacy. We don't believe in Christianity. No offense to our Christian viewers out there. But we, we repudiate, basically, all the things that make Christianity Christianity. If they want to believe in the one God, and the God of Moses, God of Abraham, and the Torah, that's good. And if they want to help us settle the land of Israel, that's also good. But we will not accept the basic tenets of their faith once they diverge from ours. If they had gotten their hands on this, 
or if he had gotten his hands on this, that would have been pretty bad. So now you see why it was hidden, the foresight, just like hiding the Ark of the Covenant was to protect the Jewish people and to protect the Ark of the Covenant, what would happen? It also says in the Gemara there, the Levites were not supposed to, supposed to take the Ark of the Covenant with them to exile because they might not have brought it back. They would have left in the exile and say, oh, we're supposed to stay in exile, just like nowadays. It's very hard to get the Jews to leave Chutzlaretz. They actually come up with all sorts of Torah-sounding justifications for staying in Chutzlaretz, correct? So too, if they had brought, the Gemara says explicitly, if they had brought the Ark of the Covenant, they would have even had bigger justifications for staying in, in the exile. So too, it's good that the anointing oil was hidden because we see that's not technically necessary anymore. It's like a hitter mitzvah, hidur mitzvah, unnecessary. There's a lot of danger uh, uh, philosophically and uh, politically because it has, and also just averas, every time someone uses it inappropriately, you could deal with kares. Better that it be hidden. It's like the, the temptation for idolatry. It has its advantages, but the sages determine at a certain point that it's better that it just not exist. We don't need the, the test. Just, you know, the, the risk is too great. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.